think about that unity. Think about that idea of we are stronger and greater united than fractured into individual units. And think about what is going on historically in Spain at that time. The, uh, the marriage of Ferdinand and Isabella, which was just a few years before this, uh, the events of this play take place, united uh, the, uh, the two main kingdoms of, uh, of uh, what would become Spain and it, in effect, created Spain. Uh, Ferdinand was, uh, uh, was from, I think, what is it, Castile, and Isabella was from Aragon, I think. I could be, uh, I, I could have that reversed. But by those two marrying, and remember, marriage was much more of a political and economic arrangement than uh, a romance, necessarily. I'm not saying that they weren't in love, I really have no idea. But uh, that brought together these two kingdoms into a unified whole. And what they then went about during their reign was notable for creating a nation and they're always pushing back against uh the the idea of division just think about the the great notable things that they uh that they accomplished think about specifically uh the year 1492 most notably uh that is the year that they sent columbus uh, over to the New World, which would do a couple of things for them. One, it gave them uh, some uh, some economic claims. It gave them a little economic boost, which is always good for uh, fighting off separatists and creating a sense of unity. We're all we are all as a nation going on this grand adventure. We're we're focusing on the, on the goal of that. Uh, it creates a kind of shared purpose in venturing out into something great and the uh the spanish navy of uh, of the time was arguably the greatest in europe uh perhaps the greatest in the world just dominating but and people could take uh, a great measure of pride in that the rally around the flag effect so to speak um is a noted political science uh, phenomenon where when your country is doing something uh, um, dramatic, taking on others, uh, you rally behind your flag. You unite behind them in a common goal, a common purpose. But the other thing that uh, the, the darker half of 1492 would be the final dispelling of, um, well, outsiders. Remember that Spain for uh, many years, many centuries, uh, was ruled by Muslims. And uh, they had come up through North Africa with the spread of Islam in the late Middle Ages, eh, second half of the Middle Ages. And... Um, were essentially ruling most of Spain, primarily the the southern uh, the southern portion around Grenada and Cordoba, um, and and they set up a uh, essentially they were part of a roughly a caliphate. There it was an Islamic rule, um, but the Catholic uh, Spanish defeated them and took over, but they were still there. All the, the Muslims were still there. And to this day, you can still see some really remarkable uh, uh, mosaic art from the, uh, the Muslim influence uh, in Southern Spain, but they were still there. And well, that's different. That's an other. So just like focusing on the others that we are going to go off into the world and conquer, overseas 1492 was also about conquering the the others within the iberian peninsula itself and what 1492 was for ferdinand and isabella was that was also the year that they kicked out essentially um all non-catholics and that is primarily muslims 
There's also some Jews. They could they they were given the the very generous choice of convert or leave, and then the uh, the third alternative was or we're going to kill you, and that's a uh, dog. Uh, that's not a dog, but that's my dog. Uh, that's a tough choice. A lot of them just left. Some of them converted. Some of them probably died. Uh, we're talking about torture, probably. Obviously, torture is a big factor in this play. But the uh, that was the other half of that equation of extending the uh the uh the the influence of Spain overseas and coalescing the power base of the good catholic king catholic monarchs ferdinand and isabella um consolidating that at home in spain so those two events can really show you what is going on in terms of building a nation and that, I think, is a very real context, very deliberate context for this play. It's not, the plot is not chosen at random here. The plot is uh, the event of that plot and the timing of the plot and what it meant for setting up the entire next century of Spain's existence was about unification, about bringing everyone together. And all of the elements within that, the uh, what happens to individual rights in that, what happens to uh, to human aspirations in that, what happens to idealism in that. When everybody is brought together in a unified whole, how do you find individual expression? And, you know, at the beginning of this play, all of those characters in the uh, in the village, I would say, are very distinct and colorful and fun, and they all have different points of view, and they're arguing, and 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 it's great, and there's a great sense of diversity within that, within all of those different roles. If you go through all the different characters, and I get that reading it is difficult, but uh, imagine it on the stage and what actors can do with the different characters of Mango and Frondoso and all these colorful guys. But then you go to the end of the play when that same group and a bunch of others, uh, including the old stuffy uh, um, uh, magistrates and councilmen like and like Esteban and uh, and everybody, uh, all these old conservative old guys, everybody turns into essentially uh, a murderous mob that not only kills but uh, dismembers and desecrates, um, disfigures, mutilates their victims like angry dogs, quite frankly. And so all of that diversity and all of that at the beginning becomes this motley group of animals at the end. Is that the effect of unity? What does it mean to be a democratic nation? What does it mean to be a single nation in terms of individual expression, of individuality, of humanity within humanism? These are questions that I think the play is dealing with.